Greetings, fellow outsiders, and welcome back to Fall of Porcupine. We are finally getting into some of the juicier bits of the story, finding out some of the stuff that might be going on behind the scenes at the hospital. But I'm ready. I hope you are. Let's keep playing. <laughs> Finley looks tired. Do we not have anything to say? We're just on our way? Finley? Are you mad at me? Weird, there's nothing to interact with either. Hey! Why the pale face? Not had your breakfast yet? No, actually. No, I can't eat a thing. Oh, it touched the old stomach. Oh, oh, it touched the old stomach trouble. Ah, uh, you could say that. That's too bad. But a walk in the fresh air can cure most ills. That's what I always say. Are you cold? No, no, I've been out and about already today. Tutor myself to a little something to warm me up. Booze? Come on, man. You know I don't touch that stuff. I was at the mall. Some kind soul brought me a nice big mug of tea. With candy sugar, even. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> Life doesn't get much better than that. Aw, oh, Alfio. I love Alfio. I think Alfio is one of my favorite characters that we've met so far. I always have to go back here to check on the Fisher. Um, and also because yesterday, like yesterday in game, and in the last episode, we got to know that there might be some secret society called the Circle here. So I want to go and check this out. Can we? No. But I. But I want to. <laughs> Finley, you can jump over that. I believe in you. Hey, hey! Finley, how goes it? Hey, Brock! Back by the river again? Of course, I couldn't leave you hanging. Leave me hanging? Over what? Over this. This? A river meditation. Have you been feeling the benefits yet? Actually, yes. Absolutely. And then take a few more deep breaths and grab a thought from the stream of consciousness to help you flow through the day. That was beautiful. Have you got one? Yep. Good. If you need more, we'll be here. The river and I. Brock? Finley? Thank you. Nothing to thank me for, young Finley. Ah, uh, But I do want to say thank you. You've helped me be more mindful. And consider my... My environment? I think more so, though, just considering that we have become more considerate of the passing of time through our time spent with Frock. A lot of the games I've been playing recently have kind of had that theme, you know what I mean? Where like time is passing and you can't stop it. <laughs> Which is both a nice thought, but also scary, you know? I guess if we lived indefinitely, it wouldn't be scary at all. But then also, nothing would really mean anything at that point either. Or it wouldn't mean the same. As it does to us now. But I'm getting too, too, too theoretical this morning. Take the bus or walk? Uh, let's walk. I'm nervous to take the bus because I don't want to accidentally skip over dialogue that we could get. So, and I think I'm going to go here first. To Old Town. And then we'll go to New Town next. Just because I think yesterday when I did that, it was like a nice rhythm. We were able to talk to the people here and then go back and talk to Pina and we ended in the park, which is so beautiful. It's probably gonna be extra beautiful today in the rain, but maybe not. The rain must be representative of turmoil happening in Finley's life or in the hospital. I just remembered rain isn't comforting to all people and in stories it can represent certain things symbolically. But to me, it's just like, it feels like a nice cup of tea. No way I'm going in there right now. Even just the thought of alcohol is enough to make my stomach churn. Not to mention what we put Guiano through yesterday. That wouldn't have been his first bar fight. Oh, Finley was hung over this morning. That's what happened. But I doubt I, it ever gets easier. I thought you had a cup of tea though. How'd you get hung over on a cup of tea? <laughs> I actually think the cup of tea was from the first night. I think Finley had some beer last night. Hope you didn't see the bar fight yesterday. You bet I did. 
but don't sweat it. It's not the first time these folks have porcupine, have disagreed with one another over the centuries. You wouldn't believe the things I've seen. It's just the hibernation festival tomorrow. Your big day, right? Oh, hibernation festival tomorrow. Your big day, right? Yeah, yeah, my big day. One of many. But you'll finally, but you'll finally be getting water again. That's good, right? You're getting a lot of water today, recently. Oh, yes, indeed. I feel dirtier than I have in a long time. A dirt not even the rain washes away. You know what I mean? I, um, think so. See you tomorrow. Hopefully the rain will stop by then. I can't wait. Toodaloo. Let's talk to this guy. How are things looking with the fountain? Do you think you'll be able to get it up and running by the hibernation festival tomorrow? Of course we will, kid. Well, get it all back and working in order. But these old pipes really have seen better days. They need a proper cleaning or replacing, ideally. But hey, that's not my problem. That makes me nervous. Everything in this town is like, well, this technically isn't up to code, but that's not my problem, is it? It's like, well, it's gotta be somebody's problem in the town. Because otherwise it's gonna become everybody's problem. Because if the hospital, like, gets completely run down and the pipes burst in the town, that's gonna be like a town-wide problem. All right, let's see if anybody's here. No? <gasps> but we can talk here. What's that village in the distance called? I have no idea. That's pretty embarrassing. Nah. You don't know geography, how embarrassing. I'm gonna be so mad at you, Finley. You're a horrible person for not knowing the cities around you. <laughs> I say as someone who gets lost very easily. So I was joking. All right, I'm gonna go back to uh, Newtown and see if we can talk to Pina. Hopefully we can. Yeah, we can. All right, I'll be back. Oh, I can look at this town too. Ever since Pina showed me the memorial figurines, I've seen the glow milk woods through different eyes. Oh, I just realized that's like a mountain in the distance, not, I thought it was like a, a Nightmare Before Christmas style cave sort of thing. <laughs> I thought it was, you know what I mean? Where it like curls over. It's like a little ledge or something. Oh, well, that's still cool. There's still mountains. I really like the Glow Milk Woods. That was a fun, that was a fun episode. Not fun from the perspective of the story because the stuff being discussed was very serious, but it was like, it was beautiful. That's a better word. It was very beautiful to walk through and calming in a way. All right. I can't go to Newtown? Finley, why? I wonder why this truck isn't open now. Because now would be the perfect time to grab a cup of coffee. Early morning, right before work. Get your energy going, blood pumping. <laughs> Although, because I haven't had Finley take the bus, Finley's been jogging every single morning. He is like in insane shape right now. His cardiovascular health has never looked better than when playing with me. All right, here's a bus stop and St. Ursula's. I wonder if there's gonna be anything with this bear <gasps> today. I wish I had your hood today. Like I always say. Oh, like I always say, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes. I can't say I agree, I'm afraid. Maybe that'll change with time. Did you see the facade collapse yesterday? That I did, here I was deep in contemplation then. What were you contemplating? Life, the universe, my place therein. There are many other statues like me, you know, all around the world. And this got me thinking. If I were a statue stood in a building made of stone, would that be absurd? Could I feel at home in such an environment? A statue made of stone surrounded myself by stone. Anyway, <laughs> I'm glad the debris was removed quickly. It was a depressing sight indeed. Aw. Uh, I wonder if this bear is gonna be in relation to the circle. <laughs> I like secret things, so the circle is like <laughs> always on my mind now. <laughs> Mr. Amani, did you want to go outside? Don't you want to go inside? <laughs> You're getting soaked here. No, leave me alone, you scoundrel. I'm not going back in there. It's filled with murderous backstabbing friends. I'll just have for my money. All right, can I get you an umbrella at least? I feel bad that you're out here. Your blanket is gonna get all wet, okay. <laughs> He's just a grumpy old guy. Grumpy old alligator. And we're in. Hey, Ingrid. Morning, kiddo. Good morning. Is it? I'm not too sure about that yet. 
I've got a message for you. Dr. Theobald wants to see you in his office. And before your shift starts, too, you didn't look too happy. What? Why? Best let him tell you that himself. Good luck, kiddo. Was it... Dr. Krakowski? I bet it was her. You'd best not keep Dr. Theobald waiting. You can find him in his office on the second floor. All right, but I'm going to do the sweep of the hospital first. And also go down to the basement, because it's normally when I start my shift that you can get those secret little things. I wonder, I'm, I wonder if I'm trying to get out of talking to Dr. Theobald. Maybe. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Hey! The day has only just started, and you can already feel the tension in the air. I don't know what's wrong. Seems like everyone's on a short fuse right now. I'm the same. That's why I'm trying to get some exercise at least. Everybody's on a short... What did I do, though? Is that something to do with the third floor or the fifth floor? Fifth floor, right? Okay, so it won't let us go into the kitchen, but we can go outside at the very least and talk to these guys! Morning, slugger. Looking for a fight with us now, too? Oh, that's... Whoa, we're in trouble because of that. I keep forgetting. What? No, what are you talking about? We're talking about the trouble you guys caused yesterday. The two injured people we picked up said you attacked them out of nowhere. Well, that's not what happened. That's not the point. We've been told expressly to keep a low profile now. You weren't there. You should have heard what they said to us. Yeah, well, we're all keeping to ourselves all the same. Yeah, all of us. All right. Well, it's like, I mean, the root of the problem was not our fault because we weren't here when everything happened. And then also, I didn't want to fight. I was not part of it. Oh, and I can't go down to the basement. All right. We have to face our fate. We have to atone for our sins. Dr. Theobald, I'm here and I'm scared to talk to you because I feel like you're gonna be mad at me. The door's locked. Looks like Mr. Hydric isn't in. Is he dealing with the reputation right now? All right, let's do it. Uh, there you are, Finley. Mia. Carl. Thank you for coming. We all have a lot to do, so let's get right to the point. We've heard about what happened last night. Carl was only defending himself. It was a personal matter. Unfortunately, we don't quite see it that way. Personal matters can also have an impact on your job. But, Dr. Theobald, you weren't there. I'm not gonna be the fall guy just because this place is coming apart at the seams. That's enough. I've already spoken to Dr. Krakowski and Mr. Hydrick. I don't like to do this, but under the current circumstances, we need to show what such actions, that such actions come with consequences. Carl, you are on leave until further notice. Sorry, what? A little distance ought to do you good. But now for you, Mia and Finley. I am also issuing you a warning. This will be recorded in your files. Excuse me, but I expected better of you two. This was on the very same day we had expressly requested that the situation not be allowed to get out of hand. Let this be a lesson for the future and for all of us. Please understand, I don't like this any more than you do, but as chief physician, I am liable for any incidents involving my staff. And when one or more people misbehave, it reflects poorly on all of us. Now please get back to work. I hope you have a successful day. Well, that could have gone better, but it also could have gone worse. Dr. Theobald, I... Please, Finley. I don't like doing this. You have to believe me. Please get to work now. You'll have to do without Carl for a while. All the more important that you do your own job properly. This will all blow over, I promise. All right, hopefully. I don't like the fact that it's on our permanent record now, though. Oh, well. That reminded me, though, the first episode, there was the file in the cabinets in the stairway. And so now I'm wondering if that's ever going to come into play. I wonder how Mr. Hydrick feels about this decision. Huh. This is so unfair. Sorry, Mia and Carl. Carl, I... It's okay, kid. 
It was a dumb thing to do. I know that. Maybe a short vacation will do me good. Give me a chance to calm down. Think about a few things. I'm just sorry you guys got dragged into this. I don't think you did anything wrong. Sometimes that ain't the point. I'm gonna head out. Maybe I'll go out for a nice leisurely breakfast. I haven't done that in years. Hey, do me a favor. Sure, what do you need? Keep an eye on the board, will ya? We don't have enough staff as it is. I'm sorry I'm making your workload even worse. It'll be fine. You get plenty of rest and sleep, and then you'll be in shape when you come back. You got it. I'll check in with you later. I look forward to it. I hope Carl's okay. Hopefully he doesn't do anything brash. Because he seems very calm about the situation, which it could be calm, but he also could be staying calm until he, like, meets up with the guys again or something. I don't know. All right. I guess all we can do today is work, so let's do that. And try not to get into any more fights, Finley, if we can help it. Dr. Krakowski's gonna be mad at us though, isn't she? No? Isn't Dr. Krakowski here? Sure she is. She's pretty much always here. She's in the break room. Dr. Krakowski's keeping her head down more than usual right now. Must have a lot on her mind. Thank you. I'll go and see her, then start my shift. Yeah, you do that. Where have you guys been, anyway? I've been rushed off my feet all morning. We got called into Dr. Theobald's office. Looks like we'll have to do without Carl for a while. We'll have to- what now? He's been fired? No, no, but he's been- he's not gonna be here for a few days. Oh, well that's just great. Exactly what I needed right now. Guess I'd better stop wasting time chatting with you then. Back to work I go. Okay, see you later. Yeah, that was something I was thinking when Dr. Bold- or Dr. Theobald said that though, and even the warning he issued to um, Mia and I is like, it's already a short-staffed hospital. So there are consequences for ac uh, actions, but at the same time, like, can we really afford to like lose ha like half of the staff on this ward? Dr. Krakowski, uh, you won't believe what Dr. Theobald said. You mean about Carl being put on leave? Uh, yes, exactly, how do you know? I assumed that was how the conversation would conclude. The issue was raised in the organizational meeting this morning. I was also told about the incident at Gil Gilbert's. It was clear that the incident could not pass without consequences. Not these days. Dr. Kakowski, if I could just explain. There's no need to explain anything. You know exactly how I feel about it. And you also know how imprudent your behavior was given our current situation. But I understand your feelings. Believe me, everyone here does. The frustration, the short cues, the thin skin. It's all very understandable. Nevertheless, I support Dr. Theobald's decision. This is not the time to indulge in such provocations. Carl is a good nurse. The best we have, I would say. This makes it all the more important that we could we compensate for his absence. Focus and do good work. I will try my best. Can't accept the decision. I'm afraid we won't be able to do it. I'll try my best. I think that's probably the best choice here. Thank you, Finley. This is another chance for you to show me what you've got. Have a good shift. All right. St. Ursula's tasks. Downloading today's schedule. Woohoo! I wonder if we're gonna have any more patients. Nope, still three. Aw, the poor Ollie was his name. One of the twins is still here. He was not doing well the last time we saw him. It looks like we've got a bat. It looks like a bat friend. Oh, it's Mia. How are you feeling? Not great. I've got a stomach ache and I'm nervous. Oh, maybe I should have intervened yesterday. Should have said something. You were way more sensible than us. You didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. I'm gonna really put everything into this. We'll get through it together. I like Mia. Mia's, I really like Mia's character. I don't know. She's just so sweet. All right, let's go into P31 first. We'll talk to the new character. I think that's a bat, right? It <laughs> looks like a little cute bat. Ah, oh, there you are, Finley. I need to make an urgent phone call. I was meant to be meeting a client four minutes ago. If I make them wait any longer, there will be serious consequences for me. Really, I don't have time to be here right now at all. First of all, good morning to you. You're Miss Van Galen, right? Sonia, Sonia Van Galen, yeah, that's right. And you came to us yesterday with some symptoms. Would you like to take a moment and explain again how you're feeling? Dizziness, heart palpitations, headaches. A sensation of swimming in a deep black sea but never reaching the shore. Same as usual, basically. I'm sure you're familiar with the condition. Same as usual? Well, more or less. 
The sensation has intensified over the past few days. Sharp chest pains. Moments when I didn't quite know where I was or whether I was awake. A colleague advised me to get checked out after I fainted twice yesterday. Do you have any pills you can give me? I don't think this is a problem we can solve with a few pills. Sounds almost like she's just exhausted and overworked. Like, I'm sure that there's like an underlying condition or something here, but the way she's talking about work and getting back to it and it's like, oh, I don't have time to be sick. Let me take a closer look at what's going on. All right, but please don't take too long. All right, continue. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. I'm not good at this one. Oh, okay. Ah, oh my God, it's even harder. Wait. Ah, wait, stop. Stop! Oh god. We are not gonna be diagnosing this. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is too much. Too much. I switched over to the keyboard for this one, and that was a bad decision. <laughs> See? Should I, uh, redo that one? Should I redo that one? Okay, I really tried. I even switched to a controller, and I still got a C, so... I'm just gonna accept that I really suck at that mini game. <laughs> Your heart rate is incredibly high. To start with, you need some rest. All right, I guess I could take an hour for lunch, for a change. Can you get me the pills right now or do I need to go to the pharmacy? You should stay here today for observation. Sorry, well, I'm a little distracted right now. What did you just say? You need to stay here for the time being. We're gonna give you some medication and monitor you for now. Please take the medicine three times a day at meal times. That means today at noon, tonight, and be on the safe side tomorrow morning too. That could be tricky. I don't eat in the morning. Then you should make an exception tomorrow. All right. So what was that? Twice a day, right? Three times. I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. I never used to struggle with numbers, but right now I can't even remember my phone number. But I'll set a reminder of my phone for the pills. There's no need for that, we'll do it for you. But you need to avoid stress, okay? Try and switch off. Don't make any phone calls. And do not work. I'll try. <laughs> it seems like, I don't know, the memory thing is the most concerning of the symptoms that I heard there. But definitely they seem overworked. I don't know if that's contributing or an underlying cause or what for um, the poor little fat creature. What they say na their name was? I can't remember. Oh, hey! Are you feeling any better today? Hey, you two, how are things? I'm doing great, Doc! I can't wait to get out of here! Yeah. But I'm not leaving without Ollie. I get that, Rudy. Just keep a little distance, okay? Ollie still needs to rest. Sure thing, Doc! How are you doing, Ollie? I'm not bad. I even managed to sleep for a few hours last night. Can I leave today? I want to go home with my brother. Ooh, slow down, Ollie. Let me check your readings first, okay? Yeah, okay. All right, which one is this? Please, not the rhythm thing. <laughs> okay, it's the pills, thank goodness. I can do this one. Okay, I think I did it, perfect. Four pills. Make up for my B? I did great, what are you talking about? Gosh, I'm doing horrible today. So? Hmm. What do you think, Doc? Is Ollie healthy, healthy again? Not quite. Oh. But we've got your bacteria under control now, too. You should be feeling better again soon. Phew. Really? Yeah! Ollinator! Coming back to the second round to beat the Shigella on points. <laughs> yes, good work, Ollie. Rudy, you better go home now. Give your brother another day of rest. Sure thing, no problem at all. Did you hear that, Ollie? Soon we can go out and have fun again. No more eating bacteria, though. <laughs> yeah. I'll need to finish my round. See you later, you two. You betcha, Doc. Sure, Doc. I'm gonna stay here for a little while. Of course, take your time. I feel so bad for Ollie. It is not fun to be that sick. All right, and then we've got something, a phone call. Hello? Greetings, hardworking fellow citizen. Hello, Carl. <laughs> I wanted to see how things were going. I just can't keep away from you guys. Everything's okay so far. Everyone's a little tense. I'm also in the middle of my rounds right now. 
Let's catch up properly another time, okay? That's a fabulous idea. I was just sitting here drinking a nice hot coffee when I got the urge to go out and do something. I could use your help. If you have the time, meet me at the supermarket after work. At the supermarket? Yep, I'll explain everything to you there. I'll have to hang up now too. Busy, busy, you know how it is. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's go to 303. This is Guiano's mother, whose first name I always forget for some reason. But she has the lovely stories, which I'm looking forward to. Hi there. Hello, Irma. Irma. It's going to snow soon, just in time for the hibernation festival. Ooh, you think so? No. I know so. I can feel it in my bones. My limbs always start this tingling when the snow's on its way. That's how I know the first day of winter is coming. I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little wistful today. My lovely roommate was discharged this morning. I suppose that's made me a little lonely. How are you doing, Finley? Same as always. Is something bothering you, my dear? Oh, you know, just everyday life. I see. I could tell you a short story to cheer you up. Why don't you start by telling me how you're feeling today? Oh, that can wait. Do you have a few minutes to spare for an old lady? I'm all ears. Yes, I'm all ears. Would you like to make yourself a tea first? In this weather, it's important to take the time to get cozy. <laughs> I like you, Irma. Thanks, but I'm okay. Doing my rounds has warmed me up. All right. Now, where to begin? Before little Guiano was born, I used to travel a lot. When I was young, I was doing an apprenticeship at a rent and renting a small town in Sandalwood. One beautiful mo spring morning, I was strolling through this lovely flea market, and I found a beautiful old globe there. I bought it right away. I placed it in my room and decided right there and then I was going to visit somewhere on that globe in real life. So without further ado, I start making plans. I packed up some clothes, a little something to munch on, of course, my travel journal to record my journey, and last but not least, my three lucky dice. I didn't have much money at the time, so sticking to the bare necessities suited me. One cool spring morning, I set out. After I'd crossed a couple of borders, my stomach was growling. I had no money left, of course, but I did have my lucky dice with me. I walked to a fancy restaurant, one that served the finest food the country had to offer, and I challenged the owner to a bet. If I rolled a higher number than she did, my meal would be on the house. I lost. I spent the whole next year working in her kitchen, scrubbing my fingers to the bone. I'd also promised her one of my lucky dice. After a year of hard work, I managed to work my way up to the co-manager of the restaurant. But my journey wasn't over just yet. I'd had more than enough of the restaurant business by then, so I continued on my way. I didn't need money. I relied on my intuition and my two lucky dice. It was the dead of winter and my shoes weren't as waterproof as they used to be. So I called a cab. I challenged the cab driver to a bet. If I rolled the same number as he did, he would give me a free ride wherever I wanted to go and however long I wanted to go there for. I rolled the dice. I lost. <laughs> These lucky dice seem less than lucky right now at this point. That's how I met my next boss. His name was Gilbert. I spent two years driving people all over around the country. Didn't get the chance to get out of the car much myself though, but I still had a lovely time and Gilbert and I got on like a house on a fire. After two years, we closed the cab company and hit the road together. I kept the second lucky die hanging from the rear view mirror of my cab the whole time. We traveled wide and far until one day pulled up to a dreamy little town called Porcupine. It was my birthday, so we headed to an old tavern to celebrate. We had a great time staying up till almost sunrise. The owner of the town tavern was an elderly gentleman, and soon we got talking with him. I challenged him to a bet. If we rolled the same number three times with our lucky die, then he would let us have the whole tavern. But on the third roll, disaster struck. The die fell off the table. Gilbert went to pick it up, then slammed the back of his head on the light uh, fitting as he got back up. He spent several weeks at St. Ursula's. The hospital was still pretty new back then, you know? When he was healthy again, he took my hand. We looked at each other the same thought, uh, both in our minds. We wanted to stay here, in our little porcupine. Forever. We scraped together our savings, and we worked hard. And for years later, we had enough money to buy the small tavern. Anyway, <laughs> that's how the story ends. You shouldn't always rely on your luck, but it doesn't hurt to give it a shot. At least not most of the time. So it ended up actually being lucky because she got to meet Gilbert. And then it became Gilbert's. 
You've seen so much of the world, Irma. I did my best. As it turned out, my favorite place wasn't all that far away. <laughs> How about you? What about me? Where's your favorite place? I don't know yet. That's all right. You'll figure it out eventually. But you've still got some work to do, unless I'm mistaken. Sorry? Oh, um, yes, actually. All right, Irma. What do you got for me? Oh, it's this puzzle. I like this a lot. All right, the only one <laughs> that I got an A on today. <laughs> of course, it was with Irma, our lucky Irma. Your fever has gone down a bit, but some of the symptoms are more severe than they were a few days ago. Should I be worried? Well, manage it. I'm going to talk to the senior physician. Thank you. I guess I'm going to be missing the hibernation festival this year. I'm sorry, Irma. I was hoping we'd have you back on your feet by then, but this inflammation's proving stubborn. That's okay. I've seen plenty of hibernation festivals in my life. One more or less won't make a difference. You'll be going though, I hope. Yes, I have a night shift tomorrow. I'll check back. Uh, I'll check out the festival beforehand. That's good. Is it your first hibernation festival? <laughs> yep. Wow. I hope you can enjoy it to its fullest. May I be so bold as to ask a favor of you? Of course. My son, Guyano, he's always so busy on the day of the festival. I was wondering if you could bring me a hazelnut candle. Porcupine's Hibernation Festival is the only place you can get them. You'd be making an old lady very happy. If I find one, I'll be sure to pick it up for you. I promise. Thank you very much. I'm tired and you must have a lot to do. Have fun tomorrow, Finley. I'll see you afterwards. You get some rest, Irma. All right, Irma needs a hazelnut candle. Is that what she said? It sounds very cozy though. Anything fall, I automatically adore. All right, so we've done our rounds. Now let's go talk to Dr. Krakowski if we can. Hey, we can talk to this guy again. I'm sorry this has put more work on your plate too. Don't worry about it, Finley. At least I'm getting my steps in. We'll get through it. Yes, we will. Teamwork makes the dream work after all. All right, back to the break room. Maybe we can get a nice hot cup of tea with some sugar in it. How did it go today? Not bad. It's been pretty quiet, luckily. Uh, could be because of the hibernation festival. How do you mean? The hibernation festival is tomorrow. You know that, right? And what does that have to do with the ward? I can't explain it exactly, but the hibernation festival is important to the people of Porcupine. It reassures them and gives them strength. Some see it as the most important day of the year. And every year you can see it in the condition of our patients. At this time of year, they seem somehow less sick. Wow, it must be a really important festival. I've heard so much about it from everyone. You're on the night shift tomorrow. Go ahead and check it out. You might like it. I'll stop by before work. Are you going to? No, I'm afraid I don't have time. Also, I don't want to. Just do me a favor and get in. don't get into any trouble, okay? Okay. We did kind of bad today. Well, we still got a smiley face, though. Thank you very much. I can see you're not letting the situation distract you too much. Keep it up. I know you can still improve further. Happy Hibernation Festival for tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening? That's right, I'll be on the night shift too. So get some rest and make sure you're nice and fresh for tomorrow. Is there any, anything else you need today? How are we gonna replace Carl? Can you check on Irma? No, that, oh, can you check on Irma? That's the most important. You mean Mr. Takama. I'm keeping an eye on her readings and I'm going to check on her again later. Have a good evening and do try to avoid any major accidents. I'm sure you'll find plenty of opportunity between now and tomorrow night. Thanks, Dr. Krakowski. I'm so glad that you believe in me so much to cause problems. <laughs> it's lovely. Okay, so I think we're good. I'm gonna go check the basement because I always wanna check the basement and then we will head on out. And then the hibernation festival is tomorrow, which is exciting to say the least. Hey, they're gone. Demi and Archie must be out on a call. All right, I was doing the rounds. <laughs> My rounds, which is to go and check and see for any dialogue that I might have missed. The hibernation festival, though, gets me excited. It's making me yearn for fall, though. Like, I feel like I need, like, like a pumpkin spice latte and some cinnamon snickerdoodle cookies or something <laughs> to get me in the mood for it. And a nice hot cup of coffee. Oh my god, look at that. That looks lovely. 
Have a great evening. You too. Staying much longer today? A little while, yeah. Well, I hope you can wrap up soon. See you at the Hibernation Festival tomorrow? I can imagine it anything more beautiful. Truly, it would be a dream come true. But looking at this new shift, Rhoda, I guess you'll have to manage without me. Aw, oh, too bad. I hope you have a good day anyway. You too, kiddo. Bye, Ingrid. <gasps> hey! Rudy, what are you doing down here? I'm waiting for my ride, but I wanted to get a snack for Ollie before I go. He said he wanted something chocolatey, but the candy in the vending machine looks really gross. Tell me about it. There's a good chance it'll just eat your money without giving you any food, too. Really? What a ripoff. Where can I get something sweet now? Try the cafeteria? Check out the second floor? I don't trust the cafeteria, so I'm gonna ch I'm gonna say check out the second floor. That's where the executive floor is. They have their very own snack vending machine there, with only the sweetest, most chocolatey delights. Whoa, really? I've gotta see that. Thanks for the tip, Doc. Hopefully that'll mean that nobody else gets sick, because <laughs> the cafeteria seems to be a running um, trend of getting people sick in this hospital. Hey, Finley. Rough day, huh? You can say that again. I can't see what you're saying. Do you want to do something tonight? Maybe I'll feel better once I have something in my stomach, or I already said I'd meet up with Carl. So we went with Carl before, and I really like her, so I'm going to go ahead and say maybe I'll have something. I'll feel better if I have something in my stomach. I wish I could say what you're saying. I've been looking forward to it. Something, something about the supermarket first. Something, something, something start. <laughs> All right. Why is it doing that? <laughs> it's not for lack of trying. I was trying to move the camera around. Oh, but they cleaned up all the stuff today, at least. That's very nice. Oh, wait, uh, let's go the other way, actually, Mia. Um, because I want to see the park at this time of night. I just want to say Mia always has the cutest sweaters. <laughs> like her outfit is absolutely adorable. And it's, it matches the environment. It's so cute. We're just a pair of cutie pies. That's all we are. <laughs> oh, we can go in here. Should we? Are we going to be able to work on our, um, <laughs> our comic with the teens, with the youths of today at all? Probably not, actually. <gasps> Maybe. Actually, hey, it's Maggie. How's Magatopia going? There you are again. I had another idea for my comic. Want to hear it? Sure, I can't wait. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, here we go. The story is set on the distant planet of Magitopia. Our brave heroine, Magatha, is about to wake in her bed. It's a beautiful summer morning. It smells like grass, raspberries, and warm air. Oh, nice. She hears a noise and opening her window curtain, suddenly her breath catches her throat. <gasps> and? Um... What comes next again? Shoot, I should have written it down. But I already have taken so many notes at school. It's no fun. <laughs> no problem. I think I know what comes next. <gasps> really? What's next? All right, here goes. She opened her window curtains and she spotted the huge monster, the planet's queen standing in front of her, a black hole, the planet's queen standing in front of her. Yeah! Her name is Queen Kaki. The most powerful queen in the entire universe. The queen and Magatha are best friends because she saved the day a lot. And after her adventure, she always is invited to the, be in the throne room where they had to put a punk band playing all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but the queen is really sad because Prince Polenta, her son, has been kidnapped. For real? Yeah, by none other than her worst enemy. Who could it be? Lord Tempa. No way. Yes, way. The super evil death rider of death. That sounds serious. Yeah, it's super serious. Queen Kaki asks if she can maybe rescue her prince. And without missing a beat, Magatha grabs her things and leaves. Where is she going? Straight to Lord Tempa's evil fortress of fire, where he keeps Prince Polenta prisoner. Wow, that sounds exciting. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, I'm done. I was exhausting. That was awesome! I'm so curious about what will happen next. Tonight I'm gonna think up more stuff. I can't wait. Uh Maggie is such a cutie. Uh, and I wonder if this M. Have you been <laughs> vandalizing the school? I won't tell on you as long as you keep um, giving me interesting stories every day, Maggie. Deal? I think that's a pretty sweet deal. We made it to the supermarket! I wonder if we're gonna run into Carl here, though. Because he was supposed to be at the supermarket. 
Ah, the store's still open. That's good. I was worried we'd end up ordering pizza after all. <laughs> There's a pizzeria in Porcupine? Um, I don't know, actually. I cook all my own meals. Luckily, we don't have to find out today. Yep, I'm gonna pop in now. You don't have to join me if you don't want to. It should be quick. Okay, maybe I'll wait outside then. The air is doing me good right now. Any requests? Whatever you feel like, I trust your judgment. Great, back in a minute. I wanna go in. Let me in. I wanna be in. Let me in. Let me in! I wanna be- <sighs> Alright, fine. We'll go sit in the trash can. <laughs> can we do anything? Or are we just waiting for Mia? Is there any, like, stones we can kick? I wanna go in. Mia, you're taking forever. 35th Hibernation Festival! Music, dance, and fun! Are you passionate about cooking? Enter Porcupine's Famous Stew Contest! Oh, is that what we're doing today? Hmm. I have ideas brewing in my brain. Hey. Here I am. Mia, have you seen this poster? About the hibernation festival? Yeah, of course. They're all over town. You think we can make stew today, too? The poster's really got me craving one. Hmm, a stew. I was actually planning to make stuffed parsnips, but sure. We'll make stew today, even if we don't... Uh, we don't even need different ingredients. You're the best, Mia. <laughs> no problem. Shall we go now? Yes, please. Let's do it. By the way, I don't think I actually know where you live. <laughs> Guess we still don't know each other that well yet. I don't live far from here. This way. This way? Okay. I bet it's going to be in the, the like gated off things on the next screen. Isn't that where we met her for the first time outside of work anyway? So we kind of knew. We kind of knew Finley. Oh my god, the color palette is just gorgeous. Oh, no way, you live here? Yep. I'm glad we're not cooking at my apartment. What do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> Never mind. Let's get started. I'm starving. I could eat a cow. Get it, because me is a cow. Oh my god, everybody has these, like, fancy pictures painted of, like, sexy animals and they're... Uh, <laughs> Remember the chicken in Dr. Theobald's office? That's what I'm referring to. Wow, that looks expensive. Please don't touch it, Finley. But... No, don't lick it either. <laughs> okay, I wasn't going to, but... Or was I? <laughs> I'm kidding. What is this? This fridge is bigger than my apartment. That's the fridge? Oh, the fridge is on the left and then the like microwave thing. Wow, your apartment is amazing. Thank you, I haven't really gotten used to it yet. I'm trying to make it feel like home, though. But how can you afford it? Don't we earn the same? Have I been ripped off? No, we have the same salary, but... Weren't you going to help me cook? What? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's get started. What do you want me to do? Or... It's not letting me choose. Oh, just a moment. All right, I'll get everything ready. I want to check out the rest of her apartment first. Oh my god, she has a cute little beret. It's orange and... Or, orange? <laughs> Green and purple. I love it. Okay, what's this? So many books. All great works that everyone should read. Why am I such a bad reader? I have three favorite books, which I read over and over again. Maybe there's something wrong with me. <laughs> well, if you like those books, then... That's good. You're reading something. That doesn't make you a bad reader, you just like hyperfixate on certain ones. Let's get started, what do you want me to do? How about you prep the ingredients? Do you have a lot of experience with cooking? Well, I haven't started, starved to death yet, but it's not one of my most refined skills either. No worries, we're, we'll, we'll work it out. I've already washed the vegetables. I've selected an incredibly important task for you. Oh wow, what is it? You need to chop the ingredients. Is that it? That's it. Oh, okay. Many people underestimate the importance of slicing correctly and preparing the qu uh, right quantities, but my recipe has to be just right so that all the flavors complement each other perfectly. I'll give you a piece of paper with all the instructions. Please try as hard as you can to cut the right amounts, okay? Sure, no problem. I can do it. Super easy with my eyes closed. Mini game time! Cooking is an art. Mia needs the right amount of ingredients. Look at the list to see how much of each ingredient you need and try to cut them into the correct place using E. Um, the display on the scale shows the total weight of the ingredient. The right half of the ingredient will be weighed for the recipe. Okay. 
Alright, what am I doing? 130. How do I do this? Wait. Oh, I did it! I did it wrong! 65? Wait, I'm confused. Thirty out of forty. Wait, I'm do. I'm so confused. Am I doing like okay? I don't think I'm doing this right. Okay, sixty, like sixty percent. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Maybe I should have read the instructions more. Oh, she's mad at me. She's mad at me. She winced. Hello, eggplant. I'm, so, I'm trying! How am I supposed to tell? Zero out of 140. One, wait. Alright. I did badly. Were you just supposed to eyeball it? That was incredible. I didn't know you were such a good cook. Now I feel bad for making you eat with me in the cafeteria. Oh, don't be silly. The food there isn't that bad. Sir Jay knows what he's doing. But thanks, I'm glad you liked it. You did a great job helping out. It's almost as if I prepared the ingredients myself. I liked it too, thank you. Hold on, is that the... It's the Hibernation Festival tomorrow. So? The stew contest. You should totally take part. What? Me? No, I couldn't. I'm sure that's just for the pros. Mia, you are a pro. If you put a stew like this on people's tables tomorrow, you're sure to win. You're serious, aren't you? As serious as my belly is happy and full. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. And you'll win. Yeah. I'll win. Yeah! <laughs> oh, phew, I'm super excited right now. It's gonna be great. You want a hand with the dishes? No, thanks, I have a dishwasher. Are you sure we're on the same salary? All right, then I'll be on my way now. Thanks again for the invitation. I feel much better now. I'm sure I'll be out like a light when I get home. I can even sleep in. I'm on the night shift tomorrow. I'm afraid I'm on and early, but I'll see you at the Hibernation Festival afterwards. I can't wait. Oh, I'm excited. This should be a fun day. All right. Cooking Mia. Cook dinner with me. I gotta an achievement. I'm gonna go see if I can talk to the fisher. Except, um, our friend Alfio isn't here today. Oh, no, I can't. All right, time to go to bed then. Oof, I don't think I'll ever need to eat again. I've got stew coming out of my ears. Stu, what are you doing in his ears? Good night. I can't keep my eyes open another moment longer. Good night, world, and all who inhabit it. The sleeping porcupine is adorable, with the full moon in the background. Hibernation Festival! Wow, I haven't slept that well in ages. I guess my body needed it. Or Mia put sleeping pills in the stew. No crazy dreams, no thunderstorm, just sleep. Hmm? I didn't know I had a doorbell. Oh, let's turn on the fan. So I like to. Oh, I couldn't move while I was using the fan for some reason. <laughs> oh, we're dressed for the day. Hello? Happy Hibernation Festival! Thank you, same to you. Aw oh, man, I'm already super excited. And I'm way behind my preparations too. Things have been really intense this year. What did you have to do? What did you think? <laughs> I'm responsible for all the exquisite decorations, of course. You'll love it, they're so beautiful. I was just in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd pick you up. There's something else I want to show you too. Then we can head to Town Square together. Sounds good. Yay! I can't wait. All right, let's talk to Alfio. Hello, my friend. I hope you have a great day ahead of you. I hope you have a great day ahead of you. Are you going to the Hibernation Festival later? I don't think so, thank you. Not in the mood? Mood's got nothing to do with it. I just don't like crowds. Hmm, okay. Well, no pressure. I'll just look forward to seeing you if you change your mind. There will be some delicious stew there. I've already tasted some of it myself. Oh, the stew contest, that's true. Well, maybe I'll sleep on it again. <laughs> Alright, bye Alfio! Alfio! 
What is that on, um, what's on her shirt? Dina had something on her shirt in the other screen and she no longer has it on her shirt now. Hmm, interesting. All right, but I wanna see if the circle is meeting today, which they're not. Hey there. Hey, Brock. Hi, Finley. How are things? Getting by, you? Getting by. Susie brought me a letter earlier with the day's mail. My sister isn't doing so well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. She's having financial troubles, so she asked if she could move in with me for a while. Unfortunately, I live in a one-bedroom mobile home over the in Sandalwood. Even more unfortunately, she's the most annoying person I know. I see. Have you replied to her yet? Yeah, she's on the train right now. She'll be here in three hours. Oh, so you are taking her in after all? I want to be the frock who helps her sister when she's in need. Even if we do fight. Aw, if two twigs stick together, they'll have a better chance of holding out against the current. A true stream of consciousness thought. Not bad, young Finley. Right? I'm getting good at it. Not bad at all, and not wrong either. And if things get too stressful, I can just move all my things over here by the riverside. <laughs> I guess that's true, frock. Okay, I'm sorry, I left Pina waiting up there. I don't think she- oh, well. <laughs> she was down there before and now she's stuck down below. Bye, Pina. I'm going to the hyper- Was that Pina? Oh my god, did I just launch her into the sky? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Alright, she's back to normal now, thank goodness. Alright, let's go to the hibernation festival, you- you scoundrel. You sky-launching <laughs> goat person, you. I'm excited for this. I hope that it's a lot of fun. I think it's going to be. It sounds fun, doesn't it? A fall festival? Oh yeah, see, Pina has something on her shirt. It's like a little award or something. I wonder if she's like an honorary member of something or other. All right, let's go down. <laughs> Sorry, Pina, I keep separating you. Oh wait, no, the fall festival is probably in Old Town though, now that I'm thinking about it, because the statue when Finley was talking to them, it was like that. We can check here though. Oh, because we can talk to the gator guy. What do you want, kid doctor? Unless you've got some plum pie, just leave me alone, got it? Plum pie? Buy a plum pie? I am unfortunately would not share it with you, I would eat it myself. Oh, there are even special postcards for the hibernation festival. Nice! Is that it? Happy hibernation festival! There's a photo of the town fountain on the front of this one. Cute! Hazelnut candles all aglow, another fall now turns to snow. But if I could ask you for just one boon, let's meet ag up again very soon. I guess the stationery store makes the postcards themselves. <laughs> I think it's a cute one. This card has a photo of some elderly folks on it. Above it reads, the Porcupine Chamber of Commerce wishes you a happy hibernation festival. Very festive, really. <laughs> All right, what about this? This isn't the same guy, right? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Is everything okay? Yes, no, I'm nervous. What's going on? Chloe's competing in the stew contest today. That's a good thing, right? I'll keep my fingers crossed for her. Yes, yes, a good thing. Cross your fingers, take the paper off the roll. Check the caps on the pens, lock the register, turn off the light. I, I think I've thought of everything. Is everything okay? Yes, yes, I think so. Today's an important day for Chloe. She's going to be defending her title in the stew contest. Everything needs to be perfect. I'm looking forward to tasting her recipe. See you there. Yes, no, maybe. Hello? <laughs> He didn't have anything to say to us. Aww, ta-da! What do you think? I made this just for today. Oh, wow, you really didn't clean up that paint I spilled. Of course I didn't. Look how beautiful it is. Your silhouette. What do you think of your masterpiece? My masterpiece? You're the one who painted it. Yes, but your contribution was essential to the whole. That makes it a collaborative work of art. You could even call it performance art. Does that mean I get a share of the proceeds? We'll negotiate the details another time. I mean, it's not like I can just sell this artwork to a collector. Because you're emotionally attached to it? Because my store is physically attached to it. Mm. Oh. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. But while you're here, why don't you come into my store with me for a minute? I've got another surprise for you inside. Is it a replacement plant, I bet? I think that's probably what it is. Cleanup party! Cleanup party? Is this the second surprise? Yes. <laughs> Just look at my store. 
I was up all night putting all the decorations together, and I was thinking, since you're such a nice person, maybe you could help me tidy everything up. That way we'll get the hibernation festival in no time. Alright! Yay! Your job, my super kind friend, is to clean up the floor. Let's go! Alright, one. Beautiful. Do you hear that sparkles? I'm cleaning it up so that it sparkles. How's it looking? I'm done. Super, superly, duperly fast as lightning, Finno. Ready to head out then? I was ready the moment I walked in here. Yay! To the town square, the hibernation festival. Let's do it, Pina. She is so positive all the time. It's a breath of fresh air. Oh, and it's nighttime now. Hmm, kind of spooky. The high street's more or less deserted. Well, sure, early closing for most folks today. It'll be dark soon and no one wants to miss anything. We should hurry up too. All right, let's do it. Oh. Oh, there are even special parse codes for the hibernation festival. I already read through all of that dialogue, so I'm not gonna do it again. We've seen the Chamber of Commerce wish us a happy hibernation festival. We can talk about the glow milk. Look, see the trees back there seem familiar at all. That's the glow milk woods. So it is, I'd recognize them anywhere after our last trip. Yeah, I know what you mean. The woods are special. They're very special, I like them a lot. I wonder if there's any magic in the woods because we saw some like purple sparkles when we were there with Pina. If not, they're just beautiful, which is also a nice thing. Hey, everybody's here. Oh, it's Susie. <laughs> Warmth and comfort to you. Is that what they say? Not yet. But I'm trying to make it a thing. A new greeting for the Abination Festival. Pretty festive, right? <laughs> it's very nice, very nice. Why does everybody have these things on them? Uh, let me celebrate in peace, Squirt. Yeah, can't you see we're here celebrating? That's right, celebrating. Ralph, pull yourself together. Happy hibernation, you old- Oh, happy hibernation, you old grouch. Hmm. Oh, what the heck. Happy hibernation festival, squirt. You too, Pina. You too, Pina. Yeah, you too. I don't know who's saying things. <laughs> Have a good one. Just don't bother us, okay? Oh, the stew. This looks so cool. Mr. Hydric, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Mm, but of course. I never miss a hibernation festival. It's a time when the whole community comes together and the economy is stimulated. A fantastic day. There's also a small matter of my participation in the stew contest, of course. You like to cook? Cooking relaxes, cooking satisfies, cooking has purpose and meaning. Which is to say, that's great. I'll be cheering for you uh, too, of course, even though Mia's my favorite. <laughs> ah, naturally, team loyalty is essential. And in the end, it's a stew that wins, not the sport. I look forward to an invigorating competition. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. And a joyful hibernation festival to you. You too. All right, let's talk to this lady. I can't remember her name though. Well, look who it is. You've got the day off too then. Not quite, sadly, night shift. Okay, well, it's still cool that you stopped by. I hope this decision com doesn't come back to haunt me tomorrow. I guess that'll depend on what else you got planned for today. Haven't I seen you before? You work at St. Ursula's too, right? That's right, internal medicine, third floor. I'm Lisa, surgeon on the second floor. Pleased to meet you. No work today? Not until tonight, night shift. How are things going in surgery? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Old Linwood spends all day acting like a big shot without ever actually lifting a finger to help. Benny and Ren keep the whole place running. Who's on shift for you today? I think Dr. Linwood and Benjamin are there. Maybe you'll have time to drop by later. If you do, say hi to Benny from me. For now, I'm going to treat myself to a tall mug of nougat punch. It's great to be able to take a breather for once. Enjoy your evening and happy hibernation festival. You too, safe journey to St. Ursula's later. All right, and this guy. Tomorrow we work hard, today we celebrate. Good philosophy. <laughs> Hello, gray flower. Gray, what? Oh, nothing. Is that, are you flirting with me? Carl, how's it going? Never better. Did you know that they've got hot cocoa with brandy here? Okay, how about everything else? I feel better than ever. I finally have time to think about the important things in life, like hot cocoa with brandy. <laughs> I even slept in late today. Man, I needed that. I'm not leaving here until the stalls run out of food and the kegs are drained. Did you know Mia's taking part in the stew contest today? Oh, really? No kidding? No kidding. 
army is going to be a champion stew maker this year. Old Cobbard might as well back up her gruel and head home right now. <laughs> it skulls for another drink. I need to line my stomach with alcohol before I start scarfing down the stew after all. Um, it's usually the other way around. Hey, what do I know? I'm not a doctor. True. <laughs> yeah. You're way more competent than any doctor I knew. Wish I didn't have the night shift tonight. Whoa there, don't get froggy finno face. My finno fanno finley friend, you and me were celebrating today. <laughs> I feel great. Hey, have you seen Guiano around? Not yet. He wanted to serve an extra foamy craft beer today. I'm gonna go find the old scoundrel. I'm getting thirsty. See you later, radiator. Hey, Guiano, does anybody know where I can get a cold drink around here? And he's gone. <laughs> Uh, why can't I talk to the horse guy? He was nice. We've seen him before. Hey, it's Mia! How are you feeling? Are you ready? Hey, Mia, anyone home? Two tablespoons of truffle powder, or was it 12? Finley, was it two or 12? You have to tell me. I don't remember anymore. I feel sick. Calm down, Mia. Take a deep breath. Okay, okay. Okay. Are you okay now? I think so. How many spoons of truffle powder go in the stew? None. There's no truffle in the stew at all. That's better. You can do this, Mia. You've done a great job with everything so far, and I've been looking forward to sampling your stew all evening. You're going to win. I just know it. You really think so? You bet. It's going to be amazing. And if I can help you in any way, just say... I'll be right here watching you cook everyone else off on that stage. Yes, we've got this. Thank you. I feel a little better already. Maybe I'll have another swig of my drink first. Whatever works for you. Ready? Or just relax one more moment. I'll be right back. I better go over to the recipe just one more time. Yeah, because I want to talk to everybody else. Hello! I hope you're enjoying the festivities. Can I interest you in a handmade fall tea, uh, tree tea trout towels? We've seen a couple uh, castanets, too. Or how about a traditional hazelnut candle? I'm afraid I still need a moment to get things ready. Why don't you come back later? I think I'll be ready after the stew contest. Uh, so we need to get a hazelnut ca candle from her afterwards. Can I talk to this little cutie pie? No. Aw, uh, everybody's so cute. It's Kim. Did you know that today is the hibernation festival? Isn't that great? I really want to make a hazelnut candle today. A really big one. Have you ever made a hazelnut candle before? No, actually, no. Today, there's no more history than what we write ourselves. I can already feel my dancing feet starting to itch. Tonight's gonna be a big one. You youngsters, just wait and see. Woohoo, I can feel it. It's like I'm 20 again. Let's dance ourselves hungry. Hee <laughs> uh, I like the guitarist as well. Hey, it's Sergey. Sergey, I didn't know you had a stall here too. Of course I do. I can't deprive the town of my street food. Stop itching your nose. That's probably why everybody's getting sick. <laughs> All this reminds me of the days when I was a young traveling chef. I fired up the grills on the street so many times in so many cities. But don't be fooled. <laughs> Just the warm-up. Today I too find myself in the orchestra pit of flavors, allowing myself to be entranced by the bubbling of hot pots. Today, there will be no long symphony of several movements. On this day, it all comes down to a single chord, the perfect note. And I will call this masterpiece Sergei's famous pepper stew. Sounds delicious. You are blessed, don't you see? You are one of the lucky few who may get a chance to sample a bowl today. This is one hibernation festival you'll never forget. There you are. I was just warming up my voice to cheer Chloe on. Want a sneak preview? Um, yes, maybe. Okay, here it comes. Everyone else's stew is whoa. I may need to work on my grammar. I'm rooting for everyone in the contest. <laughs> so you're rooting for Chloe too? <gasps> Great! I'm selling actual goods from our store today. Pens, greeting cards, wrapping paper. But if I'm honest, my thoughts are elsewhere. All I can think about is Chloe winning that trophy again. <laughs> hey, Doc. Nancy bumping into you here. Good to see you. How are you two? Lungs doing well? Couldn't be better. I've got this cool spray thing now. I just keep it in my pocket all the time. And when I'm out of breath, I take a quick breathe from it. It's awesome. Yay, awesome inhalers. I'm glad to hear that. 
But lay off the cigarettes, okay? I know it's hard on special occasions, but your lungs will thank you. Sure thing, Doc. I really don't want to end up back in the hospital. Uh, is the internet working better now, at least? I'm afraid not. Hmm, grim. Okay, can we... Hey, can you buy me a mug of nougat punch? No. <laughs> Come on, I just want to try it. Do you want to end up in the hospital again? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these teens. All right, I think it's time to start the festival and see which stew will prevail. Hello? Wow, that nougat punch smells so good. I think I'll have a mug of it. Maybe even two. Or three, or four, or five, and end up on the floor. Ready? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm rooting for you, Mia. Thank you. Fellow porcupinans, may I have your attention for a moment? I'm excited. <laughs> We've made friends with everyone, though, so whoever wins the stew is going to be a happy occasion. A happy hibernation festival to you all. Today is a special day for me, as I have the honor of officially opening up the Hibernation Festival for the ninth time in a row. You'd think this would be a cakewalk for me by now, but I'm still nervous. Nervous with joy, seeing all of you celebrating with you. This is always the highlight of my year. I look into your faces and think back to all the wonderful years I've had in this town. I've seen so many of you grow up. New faces have joined us, old ones have left, and me. I'm still here. For that, I am truly grateful. I don't want to ramble on too long. After all, we're all here to party, right? I just have one more thing to ask of you. As you enjoy your delicious drinks today and treat yourself to a hearty bowl of hot stew or gossip and laugh with your loved ones, spare a thought for those who cannot be with us today those who have passed away over the course of the last year, and for those who are at work right now or simply somewhere else. Think of them. When you see them again, tell them how much fun you had today. Make them turn green with envy. <laughs> oh my God. I thought it was a sweet sentiment. All right, let's get on with it. I, Adele von Witterstein, can feel the hairs on my back and the back of my neck standing it up in anticipation as I hereby declare this year's hibernation festival. Open! Ta-da! There's to all of you! <laughs> Cheers to you, all baby! Cheers! Here's to us! Turn on the water. Is it gonna work? It worked! Yay! Just like every year, hot water is passed through the pipes of Town Fountain to keep us warm and serve as the base for the stews. <laughs> the base for the stews that is that can't be hygienic good luck to everyone taking part and bon appetit to all the stew samplers here's to us that cannot be good that cannot i mean i know it's tradition but come on guys look at our mia don't mia give hydric a good roasting and sergey too he's been on my blacklist ever since he took the fried corn up the cob last off the menu show him how it's done Woo <laughs> all right can we talk to anybody else here we can talk to kim he's on that he's on that he's on that that was the most insightful conversation i've had the entire night oh my goodness i'm so glad we get to talk to <laughs> talk to kim i genuinely like him though He's a cutie pie, and he's a positive cutie pie. Positive in terms of his attitude. Hello? Good news! The hazelnut candles are just firming up. They should be fresh and ready to go right after the contest, if not before. Yay! Look at Adele, bopping away. Oh, I hope I'm like that when I grow up. Don't tell anyone, but a tear came to my eye when she was speaking just now. Anyways, I really hope you enjoy the festival. Too bad you can't stay to the end, but have yourself a great time all the same. See you around, finish mini. All right, can we go up on stage at all? We can. Just stick to the recipe, same as usual. Ration away, don't over season. You're doing great, Mia. Can I taste it? Finley! What's wrong? Finley! <laughs> yes? Yes? The pickle weed. What's a pickle weed? My secret ingredient, the spice that makes my tomatoes 
Stu, special, I forgot to get it. I don't have any Finley. What am I gonna do? I can't leave my stew, everything's already sh simmering, and time's running out too. Don't worry, I, um, I'll get some for you. Where do you get something like that? At the grocery store, but that closed hours ago. Hmm, any other ideas? Yes, you see Roman Hydric over there at the front? Yes. The wheat is his main ingredient. I don't know why, it makes his stew terribly bitter. But knowing him, I'm sure he won't give any of it away. I'll ask him, you just keep doing what you're doing. Just a few more minutes, dear contestants, then it's time to drop your spoons. Oh no, did you hear that? Don't worry, I'll be right back. Really? Oh, thank you. Oh my god, Sergei is putting on a whole show over there. Let me see if I can talk to anybody else first before we go and, <laughs> and talk to Hydric. Anybody down here? No, 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 no. Mr. Hydric, may I disturb you for a moment? You know, I'm always happy listening to my team's confirmed, but I still need a moment or two for my stew. And as you've just heard, time's of the essence. I need some of your I need some of your pickle weed. What? From my ingredients? Yes, could you spare some? You'd be doing me a huge favor. No, sorry, out of the question. You're a very likable young man, and I would like to help truly avoid. But if my ingredients have been outmeasured, uh, measured out precisely according to the recipe, if I change even the slightest thing, it will affect the taste. I'm sorry. What if I say pretty please? Okay, thank you anyways. Don't mention it. Don't mention what? You couldn't help me. Mr. Hydra can't spare any of his ingredients. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's my fault for forgetting it after all. Thanks for trying anyway. Do you think we could uh, get some... My young colleague, hmm? I've been thinking. You are a part of St. Ursula's Hospital, just like myself and our other young colleague back there. We have to stick together. With that in mind, I've decided to give you some of my pickle weed. Really? That's very kind of you. But of course, I can't just simply give my ingredients away. So I'd also like to ask a favor of you. Okay, what do you need? I would like a bottle of caraway liquor from the wine stand. Okay, no problem. I head over there and buy you one. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. This caraway liquor is very special. The owner has produced only one bottle of it. Oh, I'm guessing it's insanely expensive then? Expensive? No, not at all. In fact, the wine cellar is looking to give it away. Oh? Yes, it's a prize of sorts for the first person to say the secret phrase to her. The secret phrase? Exactly. It's sort of like a password. The solution to a riddle. Do you have any idea what it's about? No, but talk to the person at the wine stand. I'm sure you'll find some answers there. Okay, so we have to solve a riddle? Okay, I'll get you the bottle. Excellent. Even though it would have been nicer if you helped us for free. <laughs> yeah. Hydra seems like this is just more of a deal than actual teamwork. But you know what? We won't criticize them too much. I found the wine cellar. I'm interested in winning the bottle of Caraway liquor. Oh, really? Then tell me. The red trees have left the forest. Red trees. Oh, you don't know the answer? Apparently not, no. Okay, okay. There are a few other people here who are also playing the game. Maybe one of them can give you the answer. How do I find out who knows the answer? That's part of the puzzle. But I'm going to give you a little something to help you get started. Now pay attention. It's the buttons, isn't it? The blue shells glitter prettily in the morning sun. That's it? That's it. Take a look around, talk to people, and good luck. Thanks. Okay, so I know, oh, I have seven minutes. Pina has blue shells or something? Yeah. See, I was wondering, the button looked so out of place. <clears throat> the blue shells glitter prettily in the morning sun. I know the answer to that. Hold on. They hide when the yellow sun grows too hot. No idea what it's supposed to mean though. I'll figure it out. Good luck. All right, so we gotta find a yellow badge now. Yeah, yellow badge. They hide when the yellow sun grows too hot. I know the answer. The green train is almost here. Thank you. And then I saw we passed by a green badge here with our lovely coworker. The green train is almost here. Oh, that sounds familiar. It travels on to the purple sea. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. <clears throat> and we go here. All the way. I think this is the last one. Susie has the last one. It travels on the purple sea. The answer to that is... The red trees have left the forest. I hope that helps you. It does. Thank you, Susie. Ah, you've returned. So do you have the answer? Hold on a second. 
Are you playing the game too? Uh, why, of course, there's no rule against it after all. So do you have the answer? I, um, yes? The red trees have left the forest. Now they grow on the golden beach. Incredible! That's the right answer. You've won! And in record time, too. Really? Yay! Congratulations. Here's your prize, a bottle of Carway liquor. Thank you very much. I've got to dash. Have a good evening. You too, my friend. Drop the bottle. Don't drop the bottle. <laughs> Make sure you drop this bottle of priceless liquor. Hey, hey. Mr. Heidrich, I have the liquor. Very good, my young colleague. You can always rely on Team St. Ursula. Can I have the pickle weed now? Of course, you've held up your end of the bargain, and so I, sh I shall too. Your surprise, a bundle of the finest pickle weed. Thank you. Sorry, I've got to run now. Alrighty, tidy. Hello? Oh, <laughs> we had to pick up the pickle weed. I've got the ingredient. What? Really? That's awesome. You're the best sous chef in the world. We can talk more later. Time's running out. We, uh, da, da. da. Alright, we gave her the pickle weed. So, my lovelies, your time is up. The cooking period is now officially over. Set your wooden spoons to one side and prepare for the tasting. Dig in, folks. Official announcers get first dibs. Hee 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 hee. I bet it's gonna be Mia. That's what that's what I think it's gonna be. That was fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. I don't think I'll ever need to eat again. But before we get to the award ceremony, there's something I'd like to get off my chest. There are a lot of different people living here in Porcupine. Some have only been here for a short time. Others have spent their whole lives here. And that's good and the, the way things should be. Be kind to each other, be grateful, be understanding. If you do that, Porcupine will remain the beautiful place it is. Maybe these are just the melancholy thoughts of an old woman. Or maybe I've already had a nougat punch or two. <laughs> but I love all of you. So, before the food coma sets in, let's get to the award ceremony. <laughs> to refresh your memory, here's all the participants and their creations. Chloe took us on a wild journey through the world of porcini mushrooms. Roman presented you with a spicy pickle weed pot. Isaac whipped up some handmade alphabet soup for our bookworms. Wonderful handwriting, by the way. Our lovely Mia, a first time contestant today, gave us the tomato stew that I'm sure has bowled over more than a few of you. And our last candidate is someone we only normally see when we're sick. Sarah J, head chef of the cafeteria at St. Ursula's. His entry this year is a fiery hot pepper stew. All right, that's everyone. Now hold on to your spoons, it's about to get serious. <laughs> the winner of this year's Porcupine Stew Contest is... Mia, with our fruity, spicy tomato soup. <laughs> really? Congratulations. Yeah! Congratulations! What a great stew! And that goes for all of you as well. Congratulations on your amazing creations. And congratulations to everyone who got their hands on a bowl. You were really lucky to t get to taste such wonderful stews. And now, let the celebrations continue. You said it. <laughs> Aww. Well, I wonder how different it would have been if we hadn't had dinner with Mia then. Like, would she have ever entered the stew contest? Mia, you were awesome. Congratulations. Hee <laughs> hee, thanks. Did you like the stew? Even better than that. I haven't even tasted it yet. What? Why? Because the whole pot got gobbled up straight away. I didn't stand a chance. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, it's no big deal. I can see how delicious it was from the looks in everyone's eyes. Celebrate, Mia. You've earned it. Thanks. I feel a little awkward, actually. <laughs> All right, let's get our candle that we need. Phew, finally done. I couldn't concentrate with all the excitement of the contest in the background. Anyways, can you get something now? I'm fine, thanks. I'll go ha hazelnut candle, of course. One hazelnut candle coming right up. What do I owe you? Nothing. Nothing? That's right. Everyone gets one hazelnut candle for free if they want it. Oh, that's very nice of you. But it doesn't... Uh, doesn't it mean you end up losing money on the candles? Yeah, that's what making hazelnut candles is my favorite hobby. So I really don't mind. It means I need a little while to make them, though. But at least they always smell fantastic. Enjoy your candle. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Happy hibernation festival. Yay! Oh my god, look at Carl. Hello? <laughs> I think Carl is far gone. <clears throat> and there's Pina. So, uh, 
uh, do we just have to stop by the hospital then? To drop off the candle before... Oh, we have work! <laughs> forgot! I was like, oh, we're just gonna go home and sleep after this. We can drop off the candle later, but I forgot. We actually do have to go to the hospital. Hey! <laughs> we're stopped by Mia. Mia, is everything alright? Yes, everything's great. I wanted to give you something. Really? Is there still some of your stew left? No, <laughs> I was gone in a flash. But you're the one who talked me into entering the contest in the first place. And that evening we cooked together really motivated me. What's more, you didn't just chop the ingredients for me. You also brought me the key ingredient today. What I'm saying is that I couldn't have done this without you, which is why I want you to have my winner's trophy. Really, but you're the one who won it. Yes, but it was just as much your victory as it was mine, really. Besides, I wouldn't even know where to put it in my apartment. Thank you, Mia. I feel so honored. But how about we share it? I can be one of those- it can be one of those trophies that moves from place to place. I'll take it and invite you to dinner sometime so I can show you my finest cooking skills and then you can take it home with you and we can cook again at your place and we can take turns with the trophy and the cooking. Oh, that's such a sweet idea. Okay, yes, let's take turns. Happy Hibernation Festival, Finley. And to you. Celebrate, you deserve it. But now I need to get going. See you in the morning. Good night. Time to go to work. My favorite activity. It's definitely not going to hibernation festivals and getting hazelnut candles. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can do. <gasps> it's snowing. Hey, porcupine. All of you. Happy Hibernation Festival. Aww. That's so sweet. It's so beautiful. You can see the snow flickering in the background. Ah, this is just so pleasant. It's making me feel cozy too. Like I want a warm blanket. Music is so pretty too. Good night, Mr. Bus Stop. Well, at least the bus has a good reason not to come today. If you're partying and drinking, it's best not to be doing any driving at all. That goes for buses as well as cars. <laughs> at least the bear over here. Oh my god, wait, we can see your breath too. How many hibernation festivals do you think you've celebrated? 168. What? Really? But the hospital isn't that- but the hospital isn't that old. You're right there, but I've always been here. I didn't even know that. They brought me out a long time ago, and I may not look it, but I haven't missed a single hibernation festival. Impressive. Were you there today, too? Not in the way you might think. You know, Ninoslav, the guy from the town fountain? I don't like- I don't like him very much. <laughs> we had a falling out a few decades ago. Oh, I'm sorry, what happened? Well, I don't want to trouble you with my woes. But that arrogant upstart is so full of himself. He always has to be at the center of all the celebrations. Oh, look at me. My hot water supplies the stew contest. The stew keeps everyone warm and only tastes good because of me. Blah, 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 blah. And then he uses those lavish decorations every year, all uh, two as well. It's not fair. Are you? Jealous. Me, jealous of that slime ball and his stupendous decorations never. Sorry, I digress. Don't stop on my account. Shall I give you a tip for next year? <laughs> sure, thank you. Get yourself a hood. It'll keep the snow off your head. No one no will know it's you who's partying the whole night away. Ah, Curse that Ninoslav and his magnificent decorations. <laughs> I wonder if these... Are those just Finley's inner thoughts? Or are those somehow going to actually come into play at some point? Where... Because, like, the text bubble is coming out of Finley's mouth. But I suppose, like, theoretically, it could be a red herring, and it could actually be that we're talking to the... to the, um, guy. The first ever hibernation festival brought the people of Porcupine together. They celebrated and feasted. But when it was all done, there was still a pile of candy left over. Together, they decided to store the leftover candy in the cabinet. And on that day, my dear vending machine, you were born. Yes, I'm sure that's how the story goes. <laughs> 
Time for work. Hi, Ingrid. Not in the mood for hibernation festival? Sure I am, but someone has to keep this place running. I'll be down in a minute, though. Then we'll get the real party started. All that nonsense beforehand with the stews and everything. I can't stand it anyway. Boring. I heard you can win a bottle of Carway liquor at the stand, though. I've got to get my hands on that. I've heard it's delicious, and there's only one bottle of it. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. What? Someone claimed the bottle already? Well, I want it. Uh, which, <laughs> we'll get, we'll get Hydric in trouble. That grease ball, how dare he? The world just isn't a fair place. He won't even appreciate the drink of that quality when I get my hands on him. <laughs> now off to your shift. Dr. Krakowski's waiting. You're on the night shift together tonight. The reason I did that is because I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to explain what happened and that we don't actually have the bottle of wine, but I don't know. Hydric is a ni nice enough guy, even though he his job kind of permits him to maybe be questionable at times. Mr. Glendower! Are you here? Don't you want to celebrate Hibernation Day? I hope Mr. Glendower's okay. He seems to have his own kind of subplot story that's slightly concerning. Hey, aren't you celebrating today? Sure, we're celebrating. Yeah, sure, we got our very own hibernation festival going on right here. <laughs> Don't you want to go to the actual festival in the square? Everyone's there. Nope. Boring! Besides, we're on shift just like you. Nothing we can do about it. Exactly. Work is work. And time off is time off. My god, I didn't realize how tall the short guy's antlers were. They're like, gigantic. All right, time to go to work, I guess. I guess we gotta work. We've had such an exciting night though. Filled with wine and stew. <laughs> and disappearing deer. Hey, we can finally go down to the basement. We weren't able to before when we got all in trouble. <laughs> But maybe we can talk to this guy? No. But when we can go down to the basement, it normally means that we can interact with our little secret hidey hole and get more text dialogue we otherwise would not be able to. So that's why I'm excited. I can hear voices coming through the air vents. Happy Hibernation Festival. Here, this is for you. Oh, thank you, a gift? You don't usually do this kind of thing. I know, but I saw it when I was out shopping and thought of you. Oh, really? Well, now I'm curious. I'll open it right away. So, what do you think? I... I think I should change wards. What? Why? Wait, I... What? Hospital drama, listen to the mysterious voice. Are, like, two co-workers having an affair or something like that? That's like kind of the vibe that I get, but I can't exactly pinpoint who it is. The pineapple gave us like the most of the clue, most of the clue, but we know it's not Sergei because he one, he's at the festival and two, he doesn't like work as a physician in the wards. So that's odd. I don't know. Maybe we'll actually get to know at some point. But until then, we can work. Work, work, work. All day, all night. Work, work, work. Work, 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 work. Dr. Krakowski, where are you? I ran the wrong direction. Good evening, Finley. Happy Hibernation Festival, Dr. Krakowski. Yes. Hope you had a good time. Yes, I... It's just the two of us today. Holidays are all well and good, but someone has to keep the lights on here. That's true, so how are things looking? As they should, people actually always feel a little better on days like this. Some are homesick, others are just happy to have some peace and quiet. Still, from a psychological point of view, the Hibernation Festival actually seems to help them. I will take care of our dear Irma today. Please handle your duties. You'll find me in the break room when you're done. All right, see you soon. Oh, but I want to talk to Irma. Okay, so... Oh, I have a messenger. Carl? <laughs> Thought you were still her. I'm going home to... Okay. Hey, Finley, here's my number. Uh, let's do the... Yeah, it was fun. Things got pretty heated, though. Ah, oh, that's normal. You get used to it. 
family, where are you? Did you leave? Thought sh you weren't still her. I'm going home to kissy wissies, nighty night. <laughs> and then Mia too. Tell me about, I still can't believe I won. I'm still shaking, that was amazing. Thanks, Finley, aw. Hope you're feeling better, glad you're coming back to work. Okay, I think those are old messages. Can we talk to Pina again? No, I don't think so. Hey, that's the first time we've gotten some new text messages though. That's sweet. It's really funny. I hope Carl's like, okay though, generally. And it wasn't just a coping mechanism that he was trying to, trying to do with the hospital. All right, let's go into 304 first. These look like new patients, except for the bat. I would have really loved to go to the hibernation festival today. I'm sure you would. I'm sorry it didn't work out. It's okay, I've been having my own little hibernation festival right here. I just had a coffee with cream and hazelnut. It was the highlight of my day. That sounds actually really good. You have an inflammation of the renal pelvis. Are you in pain? Yes, but I'm trying not to let it get to me. All right, but don't make things too uncomfortable for yourself. We can always get you some painkillers if you want. For now, I'm going to give you some medication to help bring the swelling down. All right. Oh no, it's one of these. I'm not that good at these. Let's go for this one. Whoa, they're shaking a lot. Hey, I did pretty good. That looked perfect if I've ever seen a perfect perfect. Please tell us if the pain gets any worse. Or if you have any problems urinating. You should really be drinking caffeine. You shouldn't really be drinking caffeine this late in the day, but you might find that a coffee helps a little. Anyways, I wish you a wonderful hibernation festival and a sound night's sleep. Thank you. I'm definitely wide awake right now, I've got to admit. <laughs> I had too much coffee. <laughs> Alright, let's go see our bat patient next in P31. Hello. Uh, good evening, Miss Van Galen. I... It is important not to get rattled. After every inhalation comes an exhalation. Everything that is closed will one day be open again and vice versa. May I interrupt for a moment? Oh. Hello, Finley. I didn't hear you come in. We were just lost in conversation. I bumped into dear Sonia this evening in the cafeteria. That's one way of putting it. I'd forgotten I was meant to have an important meeting today. Suddenly it got hard to breathe and I passed out again. Dr. Guterra brought me back here. That's been happening with Irma. The breath thing and then the asthma at the beginning of the game. Seeing trending here. Dr. Guterra brought me back up here. I have to admit a certain amount of luck Benjamin from surgery happened to be passing through at the time too. It was a huge help in getting Sonia up here safely. Thank you, Dr. Guterra. Uh, what were you talking about? Do you have any recommendations for course of treatment? What were you talking about? Oh, this and that. Ourselves, the world. I helped Miss Van Galen breathe until she managed to calm down. Miss Van Galen, I wish you the best and natural recovery of both body and mind. Now I've already taken far too long of a break. I wish you both a pleasant evening. Thank you, you too. Bye. You have blood on your shirt. How are you feeling, Miss Van Galen? I still feel a little out of sorts. Your blood pressure must have begun fluctuating. You had an extremely high resting pulse when you first arrived here. The drugs regulate your blood pressure. Dr. Guterra uh, kept talking to me until I felt better. He was saying something about my inner core, breathing exercises, that kind of thing. I tried yoga once, not my cup of tea. Yes, Dr. Guterra has his own way of looking at things, but he wasn't exactly wrong. <clears throat> hmm. Is that <clears throat> because she needs like to calm down and not get so stressed and worked up all the time? Let me check your readings. We have to make sure all the drugs are working so that you remain stable. All right. I'm concerned about the blood, but if you noticed she was in the kitchen, which is not a good thing. Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. And once you lose points, it doesn't matter how good you do at the end. It doesn't like regain it. So I'm just accepting that I'm horrible at that one. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna ever get any better. I'm afraid medication will only go part of the way solving your problem. It would be wise to develop ways to reduce stress. Unfortunately, this happens a lot to a lot of people nowadays. But how am I supposed to avoid stress? Well, there's a few options, but you'll need to work out what works best for you. They didn't teach us much about stress avoidance techniques at medical school, to be honest. 
The thing that Dr. Guachera said, they kind of helped. I'm gonna take a nap. Maybe I'll get lucky and catch Dr. Guachera again tomorrow. Rest well. All right. I don't know if I finished my sentence before, but she was in the kitchen in the cafeteria before, which again, seems to be a trend. So let's do our last patient and then check in with Dr. Krakowski. I'm sure we've got to be exhausted after the exciting day that we've had. Hi there. Who are you? <laughs> Dr. Ger uh, Gerda Neinstorf? Finally, bring me back a cup of black tea. Then tell Dr. Theobald I want to speak with him. Um, I'm actually your attending physician. You're a doctor. St. Ursula save us. You're barely out of diapers. Do they sell medical degrees online now? Let's not lose sight of the matter at hand, Dr. Neinsdorf. You came to us today suffering from severe tremors. On top of that, you've been complaining of recurrent itching and muscle atrophy. Liver cirrhosis. What? Liver cirrhosis, are you deaf? Have you already been diagnosed? I can't see anything here. I'm a surgeon, child. I've had liver cirrhosis for longer than you've been alive. Accordingly, I am aware of the high mortality rates once surgical intervention becomes necessary. That's why I'm here. So let's cut to the chase and get down to business. Okay. All right, I got your medication. If we didn't get that one thing, we would have done great tonight. Your liver readings are in the critical range. You don't say. You make sure it is uh, to make sure it is corrosive of the liver you're dealing with. We need to do a liver biopsy. No, no. I already know it's corrosive of the liver. What do you take me for? Although I'm sure your accounting department will be thrilled if you carry out a few necessary unnecessary procedures they can charge me for. What if it's not liver corrosive? Do I have to teach you how to treat me right here? Listen, I I like a drink if you know what I mean. Excuse me. I'm talking about chronic alcohol abuse, and your nursing staff insist I don't drink here. So now I have two problems. Alcohol withdrawal, and this blasted liver cirrhosis. According to the last research, your symptoms could also be triggered by other diseases. New research? A load of waffle, that's what it is. Well, go ahead. I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing. Oh, am I supposed to do anything? What do I do? Maybe we talk to Dr. Krakowski about it. Although, I don't know what liver cirrhosis specifically is, but if she does have a drinking problem, then that does affect the liver in the long term. So it's most likely something to do with that, I'm assuming. Um, but who knows? We'll see how it plays out. I'm done, Dr. Krakowski. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, everything's fine. You're right, the patients are really doing a little bit better today. I'm glad I'm not on the night shift. I'm on the night shift now. It's really quite pleasant, if you say so. Well, let's see. smiley face. I wish I didn't... Ah, I wish I could do that rhythm one better. You were really quick today. I like that. I have one more request for you. Of course. What? Irma. I mean, uh, Mrs. Takama. I've been watching her tonight and she's not doing very well. She asked if the nice doctor would stop by again today. I think she means you. Why don't you go and check on her? I'm sure she'll be happy to see you. Sure, I'd love to. I've got a gift I wanted to give her anyways. Well, don't keep her waiting. I hope nothing bad happens to Irma. I really, 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 really hope nothing bad happens to Irma when we give her this candle. I'm nervous. Hi. Hey, Irma, how are you doing? Finley, what are you doing here? I thought you were out celebrating today. I was, it was great. I met a lot of people and this two contest was really exciting. They got the fountain working again for the occasion. And look what I found, Irma. Aw, it's so nice. <laughs> Can you smell that, Doctor? I farted. The scent is just incredible. You've really made my day. I'm feeling much less shivery already. This brings back so many images for me. So many memories from years gone by, from all the many hibernation festivals I've seen. It was your first one today, wasn't it? Yes. But you should get some rest, Irma. All that talking gets your lungs. No, it's all right. I need someone I can spin my yarns to. 
I'm very tired. But I would like to tell you one last story. Irma? What do you mean by that? It's okay. What? No, it's not okay at all. We'll get you back on your feet, I promise. I'll get Dr. Krakowski right away. We'll figure it out. You've already done more than I can imagine. But may I ask one more favor of you? Of course, what is it? I'd love another cup of tea. My throat's a little dry, you know? Of course, I, we... Now, Finley, don't fuss. It's all right. I'll just dash to the break room. We have tea there. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, I don't want anything bad to happen. A cup of tea would be just the thing right now. Is this gonna, is it, are we gonna get the tea and come back and she's no longer gonna be there? I don't like this. I wanted Irma to be okay. Maybe she'll be okay. Maybe she'll be okay. I don't know. We can talk to Dr. Krakowski in here, though. We always have a hot water here, thank goodness. What kind of tea should I make? Peppermint tea, fruit tea, green tea, winter tea? Um, can we bring tea to the one doctor? Because they wanted black tea. Maybe winter tea? Okay, now I better get this straight to Irma. Finley, taking a break already? No, I... I'm just getting a cup of tea for a patient. Ah, oh, yes, old Irma has a taste for the finer of things. Could you come with me, please? Irma isn't doing well at all. I know. I already went to see her and checked her readings. She's going to die. In the next few hours. Oh, we have to do something! Dr. Krakowski! What I'm going to do is make myself a cup of tea, too. How can you just walk in here like nothing's wrong? Why aren't you doing anything? I've already done everything I could. Sometimes even the best treatment in the world can't help Finley. But go to her. Make her last hour as comfortable as possible. That is our duty to her now. Make sure she has enough painkillers. What about little Guiano, though? Should we contact her son? I've already tried that, too. Unfortunately, I've not yet been able to reach Guiano. I'll keep trying and inform him of this situation. Go now. Our Miss T is getting cold. Okay. Ugh. See, I think something... Maybe it's the water. Maybe it's the water in the town. I think something's happening to make the patient sick because we've had another patient come in with similar to Irma's symptoms. The one bat with a blood on their nightgown. It's just gonna be disappointing if we can figure that out after Irma's gone. Because she's such a sweet lady. Irma, I'm back and I've got your tea. Irma? Hmm? Who? Oh, sorry, I must have dozed off for a minute there. You're a darling, thank you so much. Just set it down there. I remember my first hibernation festival like it was yesterday. It was already very cold for the time of year. The cars and park benches were buried in snow, but the hibernation festival still had to go on, of course. Gilbert? Loved hot air balloons more than anything else in the world, but he also had a great fear of flying. And he wasn't the youngest anymore either. Neither of us were. So we compromised so we compromised by heading to the countryside to watch the balloons race. At least we used to until it was banned. It was the hibernation festival. When Gilbert sat in a hot air balloon for the first time. There was already snow on the roads and the rooftops of the houses. The lights, the smells. We were there every year. When it was cold outside and everyone started to come closer together. I'd already bought a his <clears throat> hazelnut candle and enjoyed some lovely conversations with plenty of laughter. When Gilbert secretly slipped away, he'd spotted a hot air balloon in the square. Back then, you could still book flights in the winter. They said you could see the whole town from up there. But that year, the balloon remained grounded. 
The weather was already bitterly cold and very windy. And then all of a sudden, an icy gust of wind blew across the square. Hats and caps flew through the air. Mothers had to hold on to their children. And that gust of wind blew my Gilbert right into the basket of the balloon. When he picked himself up to climb back out again, he got the fright of his life. The balloon had broken loose and was already rising hundreds of feet above the town. And me? I'd seen the whole thing, and I leapt desperately to try at at the dangling rope to try and hold the balloon down, but instead I simply floated away with it. <laughs> Gilbert helped me into the basket and the wind carried us higher and higher into the wintry clouds. Porcupine was no more than a small speck of light in the fog. Eventually it disappeared altogether. Gilbert could barely move due to his fear of heights. The cold bit into our skin, but I managed to cheer him up. His dream had finally come true. I reminded him, riding in a hot air balloon. Unfortunately, we soon realized that the burner was frozen. But then I remembered the hazelnut candle that I brought. So Gilbert and I made ourselves comfortable in the basket of the balloon and lit the candle to keep warm. I don't know how long we sat there, but it was indescribably beautiful. Just us, the sky, the clouds, and the scent of the hazelnut candle. Aww. <laughs> Suddenly there was a bang. The burner had started again, and the heat from the hazelnut candle had thawed it out. Gilbert quickly figured out how to steer the balloon. Even the altitude didn't bother him anymore, but which way would we go? Then, before we could try to be even begin to worry again, I heard it very softly. A hibernation hymn, the song everyone in Porcupine sings together for the hibernation festival. We strained our ears and Gilbert steered the balloon straight towards the song. Eventually, Porcupine emerged from the fog. The beautifully decorated marketplace, the snow-covered roofs, and the festival goers, what a sight. They had broken into song to help us find our way back. Gilbert landed right in front of the fountain, and all the crowd cheered. And that's the story, more or less, of how my Gilbert and I took flight together for the first and last time. He died the following year. I'll be reunited with him soon. Then we'll fly together again, my Gilbert and I. Are they still playing the hibernation hymn in the square? Maybe, I'm not quite sure. I think I can hear it just faintly. Yes, they're probably still celebrating and there's... And here's the two of us, stuck working in the night shift in the hospital, eh? You're doing a good job with the work, but I... Irma? I made it to the... to the hibernation. I wish Guiano had made it. All right, well, on that very, very, very sad note, I think I'm gonna leave this episode here. It looks like it's snowing and it's nice, be nice and beautiful out. Um, I suppose I saw it coming, but it doesn't make me any less sad seeing Irma go. And I suppose that is the life of a doctor. It doesn't make it any emotionally, any better emotionally. I just mean that's, that's the first patient that our little Finley has lost. So I suppose we'll deal with the fallout of that in the next episodes. But I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are, be sure to leave a like down in the video and let me know your thoughts on this game so far down in the comments. But on that note, I'm going to say farewell, friends. Thank you so much for being here. Have some hazelnut coffee today if you can. <laughs> um, remember, we're not alone out there, and I'll see you in another episode of Fall of Porcupine. Bye bye I didn't think it was possible to get more cozy in this game, but they just added snow out the window, and now I just feel like I need, <laughs> I need a hot cup of joe and... Nice blankie.